Hey, how's it going? I'm Ida Golden and welcome to my blog. All right, okay, so still don't know when I'm going back to work. It's like halfway through July and I still don't know when I'm going back to work. Um, fingers crossed, hopefully I'll hear something soon. But obviously it's looking fairly unlikely at this point that it's going to be the end of July. And there's not really a whole lot I can do about that, so... Okay, so <clears throat> I want to try really hard not to talk about my writing today. So um, I didn't mention this in my roundup of June because technically it happened at the beginning of July and I didn't mention it last week because I got sidetracked with all the book stuff <laughs> again. Um, but I have actually managed to see, or my mum's have actually come, managed to come down for a visit, um, you know, with the whole bubble thing that, you know, we, we can do now. Um, I've only seen them the once so far. <laughs> Um, but it, it was really nice. It was like the, the first sort of proper human contact that I had um, during this whole process because obviously I, I do live alone. Um, although I've been like having regular, oh, more regular <laughs> uh, phone calls from my you know various family members, um, it's still not you know actually the same as actually having physical people. In the room with you actually talking to you um so yeah that was that was really nice um as i said it's, it's just happened the once and it was technically the first week of july which is why i didn't mention it in my roundup of june and i was considering sort of not mentioning it um until my roundup of july but that felt a little bit like i might forget <laughs> um i mean as i said it's um one of those things where you know I'm, I'm an introvert and I've talked about this before I'm definitely an introvert I don't need you know to be seeing someone every other minute or talking to someone every other minute I mean I'm you know regularly in contact with um, both my uh, cover guy who is a friend of mine as I've mentioned before and obviously the wonderful Jade um, we I'm usually talking to to both of them at some point online during the day, but it's online. So it's messages rather than actually, you know, hearing a voice or seeing a face. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I am in sort of fairly regular contact with you know, a couple of people where I'm talking to them on, on a daily basis, but it's still, it's still not the same as actually sort of like having somebody around. But, you know, for somebody who's a low energy introvert and doesn't necessarily want to be having to come up with something to say every other minute, you know, it's, um, it's definitely one of those things where you kind of enjoy, you know, just the, the slower pacing and the freedom that, you know, messaging people gives you where you're still having human contact, um, but it's not necessarily a stressful level of human contact for someone who is highly introverted, um, I am definitely highly introverted, I mean, um, it's been like about two weeks <laughs> since my mum's came down to visit. They didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't phone them last week, I didn't see them last week. Um, literally the week went and I was something like, oh, we're, we're, we're on another week. In fact, we're at the end of the following week <laughs> and I still haven't contacted them or had them contact me. And I actually just haven't thought about it. And that's, that's kind of a little bit what it's like for me being an introvert. It's not so much that I, I don't care about these people in my life. That I don't want to talk to them because I do enjoy talking to them when I get the opportunity to. It's more a case of I just don't think about it. If I'm, you know, if I'm on my own and I'm spending that time on my own, then I'm just not really thinking um, about it, and I'm not necessarily sort of looking to to make that connection. Um, if I don't get that sort of definite sense of, of loneliness, um, like even even sort of now when I'm kind of like getting to the point where I'm like starting to feel it a little bit i'm still able to go like two weeks with no phone calls to anybody 
I'm so I'm so bad at keeping in contact with people. I apologize to people in my life. It's not, it's not I don't want to talk to you. Is that I just get so focused on what I'm doing that I just don't I just really don't think about it. I really just don't think about it. Um for one reason or another the weeks will just pass and I'm just you know I'm keeping myself occupied enough I'm not really noticing that I'm lonely having said that I do appreciate every time that I get a phone call um and whenever I speak to, to any of my family um and it is it's just my family um I'm, I'm really really bad at phoning my friends <laughs> but then we're all a bunch of introverts so so the blame is all around there um the blame, the blame is very much all right. <laughs> um, yeah, it, you know, it, I just it will just happen. It will just happen where I'll, I'll go a couple of weeks where, like, literally, my only social contact will be online at the moment. And as I said, I'm not. I'm, I'm doing enough to sort of stave off the feeling of loneliness more than anything else, which is easy to do. As I said. Because I am an introvert, I am more naturally inclined to being um, on my own or in, in a sort of solitary situation. But obviously my, my day job was very much all about people. <laughs> very much all about um, dealing with people and interacting with people, both people that I work with and, and with customers. So, you know, in, in that sort of sense, I think that's kind of the main reason why I'm, I'm very much kind of going, I, I'd like to go back to work at some point. Um, not just because my writing career hasn't taken off yet, which, you know, <laughs> you never know. You, know. you never know, it might suddenly take off overnight. Um, but yeah, not just because of of that reason, but because very much, you know, it's, yeah, it's one of those situations where, although I'm not feeling lonely I'm definitely suspecting I'm probably a little bit starved for human contact even though I'm not speaking out um it, it's looked like a whole bunch of contradictions and I know it's a whole bunch of contradictions but that's just I think that just very much sums up me as um uh, as an introvert in, in general really where I'm not a shy introvert, so I'm not the you know I'm not a wallflower type of introvert, and there's nothing wrong with people who are shy, wallflowery type of introverts. So it's you know, if that's how you are, that's how you are. You do you, and, you know that's you know perfectly acceptable. <laughs> but that's just not the type of introvert that I am. I am a lot more confident. Um, you know, I, I am sort of. Uh, more willing to put myself out there sometimes by forcing myself a little bit and sometimes by just you know because it's it's just how I am it's just you know how, how I sort of do things um uh but at the same time I'm also the type of introvert who very very much copes being on their own for long periods of time without even kind of noticing it um so it, it sort of puts me almost on like these these two ends of the introverted scale where you've got like elements of how I am which kind of reflect the more extroverted introverts. Um, like you get more introverted extroverts, you can get more extroverted introverts. And I, I definitely think I have qualities that are definitely more extroverted. Um, and so, you know, there are definite parts of me where people would be like, oh, yeah, no, you're, you're more towards the extroverted end of the scale. Like, you know, you, you have all of these qualities that make you more towards the, end, the extroverted end of the scale. And yet, I am probably further down. <laughs> I'm probably further down the introverted side of things than a lot of the shy introverts are because I can just go such long periods of time without noticing I'm not speaking to anybody. Um... Case in point, spent two weeks, probably actually over two weeks since I saw my mum, and I've not had a phone call or made a phone call <laughs> since to any member of my family. And it was my brother's. But I, to be fair, I did send my brother a card, and I did wish him happy birthday via message. And I am planning, I am planning to phone him in the next couple of days. 
if I remember. The thing is, is I, I meant to do it yesterday. I wasn't going to do it on his birthday because I knew he was going, he'd gone to the beach and I knew that I'd give him a much shorter period of time. And I know, uh, especially because, uh, because my niece is, is coming up for her first birthday, that, you know, the phone calls to him are probably going to be slightly longer because we're also going to include uh, a little bit of catch up with, with how my little niece is doing. Um, so I didn't, you know, that the, the plan was always sort of, you know, if he's, if he's free during the day, then I'd have phoned him on the Friday, but the second and I was, he was going to the beach, I was like, okay, I'll wait till Saturday. And then it got to about seven o'clock Saturday evening, and I'd realised I'd forgotten. <laughs> so, mm, might, might get it done today. But again, that's, that's just how it is. If I'm focused enough on what I'm doing, the entire day will just go and I'm like, oh, it's been a week and I haven't made contact with anybody. <laughs> and that's, that, that's just a thing. It's, it's this sort of contradiction that I've, I've kind of got. I'm definitely feeling my isolation. But at the same time, it's not bothering me as much as maybe it should be. <laughs> Which sounds really bad, but it could also just be a testament to, you know, I'm filling my time with enough things to keep me distracted from loneliness, which is probably a good thing because humans are very social creatures and, you know, if you notice that loneliness, it's going to make you depressed and it would probably mean I'd be eating even more than I already am and I already know that I'm eating a lot and in, in fact that is probably the one sort of definite sign I've got that going back to work would be good to me at this point. I mean it'd be like, so there's the thing, when I am eventually a writer, full-time writer, I know I will be working from home and I know that I will be probably on my own most of the time, but hopefully we won't be in the middle of a pandemic so people can come over and visit and my day can be broken up and my week can be broken up by actually seeing people. Apart from the one visit that I've had from my mum in the 117 days since I've not been able to work, I have not seen anyone. And that is just very much, well, I say I've not seen anyone, obviously I've, you know, gone out and then and then food shopping and stuff and people have been around. I've not socialised with anybody. I've not been in the same kind of contact with people that I was accustomed to, even though I found it very tiring. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's very much that's the kind of situation I'm in now where, yes, there are definitely signs that the, the loneliness is is getting to me as I said I'm I'm definitely overeating um and I'm I'm definitely constantly finding I'm you know, still writing a chapter a day like I I know I know what I said and no no Silas is the end of the four book spin-off series to the never rating collection this is a spin-off again <laughs> so this is a separate series so I I am correct I just managed to find out where in the timeline I was going next with it, and um, so yeah, no, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that, but I'm still writing a chapter a day, I think, because there's nothing else to do with my time, I mean, yeah, okay, I could, uh, I could concentrate more on the editing side of things, I could be getting more reviewing done, um, there, there are other things I could sort of do, but having to sort of like sit and concentrate on on everything in a particular kind of way and at a particular kind of level where you're sort of very active in the process because that, that's the thing when, when you sort of when you're sort of reading slash listening to something that you're going to review it's a very passive experience up until the point where you actually um, come to, to, to review it yourself um, when you're going through um, editing, yes, there is an active component to it, but it's a much more passive process than the actual act of writing. You know, sitting down and, and doing that amount of writing is a very active process. It's a very, it feels like work, good work, but it feels like work in a way that, you know, 
just doing the editing didn't really feel. And obviously I do have the comparison because the first month I was non-stop editing the two books that almost both have covers now. <laughs> There's like a little tiny, less, little, less, little tiny bit that needs to still be done to the second cover and then I'll have the covers for both of them. Um, but yeah, that first month was just non-stop editing, just absolutely non-stop editing. Um, where I was like, literally, I was going through, I, I think like at the fastest, I was going through both books in like four days and then having a break and then going back to it again. Um, and, you know, just for, for another pass and another pass and another pass and another pass. So, yeah, I I definitely feel like I need to do stuff that feels like working. Um, so, again, I could be doing that with the editing and feeling like that editing process is that same kind of, of work and intensity because I know it I know it definitely can be but at the same time it's kind of like I've got this this huge amount of opportunity to just write and and, and produce more things um so I've got the option of uh, it, it's like if I knew I think I think that's the thing I think if I knew this was how things were going to remain because I was making enough money off of my writing to be able to just do the writing full time. I would be a bit less, okay, I need to start doing the next writing project now, I need to start doing the next writing project now. I think it's because I've got this sense of, well, at some point I'm going to have to go back to the day job, so I'm going to no longer have these long expanses of days that need to be filled uh, with, with time, I might as well use it for writing all of these projects and getting as much backlog there and ready and waiting as I possibly can. Um, because, you know, why not? I've got the time to do it at the moment. Um, it's not necessarily the <laughs> best way of thinking about it. But I've been very productive. I have completed Four books. I have completed, like, started and finished four books in the time that we've been in lockdown. Four. Four complete books. I finished another one and I started two more. One which is a slum burner. Um, where I, I, you know, that that's fine. That's what I will, you know, that will be my main project once I go back to the day job. Um, and one which will be written at the one chapter a day pace and is, I'm writing the third chapter of that today um, when I'm filming this. So I think it'd be like chapter seven or eight by the time this one goes up, this vlog goes up. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's one of those situations where I'm like, I don't, I, don't know how how much longer this opportunity will will last and obviously you know once I am able to become a full-time writer you know I will know that oh actually I've got all of this time in the world um, I can take things at whatever speed that I need to take things out I don't need to sort of cram everything into this very short span of time um, which is I think kind of what I'm feeling a little bit at the moment where it's sort of like eventually I'm going to have to go back to the real world eventually I'm going to have to go back to work um, I don't know when but even if we got like the thing today saying yeah you're going to go back to work soon it's still going to be like three weeks from today and if the book is the 19 chapters long that all of these um quarantine books are <laughs> all of these books written in quarantine are um then I know it's going to yeah I've got the time to finish it so it, it will be like okay yeah this is the last one I'm going to do and then those last couple of days, I'm going to relax and you know, maybe review a couple of books because I know I don't have the I don't have the time to start anything new. I can you know do this, I can do that, and I can I can slow the pace down a little bit. But whilst I'm sort of like I have no idea when I'm going back to work, just knowing I've got something to be filling my time with, which feels productive, that feels like I'm achieving something, um, that feels like I'm doing something I wouldn't normally have the time to do. Because that's the thing. I would normally like with with the uh, the editing of the two books, like the two door maker film books. I was doing like you know, my my days off were spent just doing the full edits of it, so it's it's kind of like 
that's something I know I can be doing in and around working. It was something I was doing in and around working and putting it in and doing like the editing of the evening and stuff like that. And, you know, doing the, the slow burn writing of the morning. I know that's, that's that I've got the time to do that. I can do that around my day job. But sitting down and writing a chapter a day, I can't do that around my day job because there's just not there's just not enough time in the day, not with how long it actually takes me to to write through the chapter and then do its initial sort of edit through as well. So knowing that I've kind of got the time to actually do this now, um, it feels like this is what I should be doing now, even though there's a part of me that it, you know, it's obviously and then that's, I'm not as exhausted with it as I should be. Like, the more I do it, the more I'm like, let me just do this for the rest of my life. Um, but, you know, having, having said that, if I knew I had, like, the time, I would have been, like, if, if if after finishing Silas, I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm a full-time writer now, um, I would probably like, go, okay, I'm going to take time to sort of concentrate on doing this a little bit um, and, you know, let these other ideas mill over a little bit um, before actually sort of like setting down and, and writing anything else. But because I'm like, at some point I'm going, back, I'm going back to work, I need to use this time that I have to my advantage whilst I, whilst I have it, what is the most productive thing that I could be doing? So that's, that's the other thing. If I knew I was writing full time, I wouldn't be writing at a chapter a day. I, I would drop that pace a little bit. I would do a bit more editing. I would get in the time for doing the reviewing. I would pace my day completely differently. I would probably set up like a proper proper work schedule for myself for what I was doing and when I was doing things. But because I'm kind of like, at some point I need to get back to day job. Yeah, it's just, yeah, this is a very, very mixed sort of video. <laughs> I apologise. I sort of started talking about one thing and then got sidetracked and started talking about something else. Um, I think I will end this here before I bubble my way into the third topic. Uh, <laughs> especially when I, I think I'm sort of like randomly um, sort of in ways kind of contradicting and then uncontradicting myself. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, Okay, so um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one, even though it's sort of been like rambly and the first half almost has nothing to do with the second half. Um, I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing what I'm talking about next time. Fingers crossed that I get the news for when I'm going back to work between now and then. And I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.